Alright guys, welcome back. It's going to be a very intense match. You know, I have to say, it was looking like Slayers was just crushing through. They had so much momentum, but Dong Gui came in. And now it's looking like they could possibly take it. Yeah, especially with Guinea Pig as well. He gave them the, the first win that they needed to get back off their back. And it's very important for your mentality for the players in this type of situation. There's nothing worse than going down 0-3 and having so much pressure on that one player. But it is going to be Ganzi versus Dong Gu on dual site. Dual site has been a, a map that Zerg players have historically liked to veto. Part of it is because the rush distance isn't very long. It's very difficult for a Zerg player to take a third base on this map. It's kind of far away. I wouldn't say very difficult, but it's not easy. The natural is kind of wide open. And just a two-player map in general that it's hard to have a third base on for a Zerg player, it, it does tend to be difficult. You can't like take six bases like we saw last game, Dong Rigu do. You just can't do that on this map. It's just and actually if, not possible. And if possible. you do, it's generally like a 40-minute game. Exactly. All right, so the countdown has started. The map is loading. Is Dong Gu going to win again, or will Ganji close it out? Let's find out here at the GSTL Jupiter. All right, over here at the right, member of the team Slayers. Very strong Terran player he is. Slayers, Kanji. That says Ganji, by the way. <laughs> of course, over here at the left side, a really popular player, not only in the Korean scene, but also in the foreign scene. A strong Zerg. He is MVP Dongregu. Dongregu, and he actually made his name out of these team leagues. This is where he shines. Exactly. If I'd, if I'd ever want to have an ace player, it'd be him. A lot of people did pick him in that fantasy league. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's very true. I was looking through some of those posts, and a lot of people really liked him. I mean, well, he's, he's done so results. well. Yeah. Why not pick him exactly? <laughs> But this could be a very big roadblock. Ganji, very, very strong Terran. He is very strong, and, you know, I was talking earlier about how Zergs have kind of struggled on this map in this matchup. It's not a very hard map. It's not an impossible map, but it's one of those maps, like I said, there's a total of eight bases on the map, it looks like, from the looks of it. Mm -hmm. And that's not very many when, like we saw last game, Dong Gu had almost eight bases by the end of the game. He just was able to contain his opponent, use that Mutalist style. Whereas on this map, using that Mula style, just it's not as good. I feel it hasn't had the chance to really flourish yet in the, in the leagues. Uh, yes, you do have a lot of practice in-house, but it's not until your creative players match up against another team's creative players where you really do see the game progress in the certain map. Exactly. Now, of course, that drone saw the gas of his opponent, so he knows it's not going to be a two racks. He knows it's not going to be a fast expand. He's going to go back home thinking he's got to defend himself against several different possibilities. Mm -hmm. One of those being Hellions. Hellions becoming, they were really popular for a while towards the end of the beta and right at release and they kind of fell out of popularity after the Roach changes, but now yep. they're coming back again. But it looks like it is, of course, not going to be that. It's going to be starting out with a Reaper. This is becoming more popular as well. Yeah. Just not, not as bad as we used to see it back in the beta, but definitely put enough pressure on. And if for somehow... Uh, the Terran does get a bunker up, they can be so frustrating because yeah. they do reach uh, a lot of the buildings, uh, and especially because they can jump up and down the cliffs. Exactly. They can defend a bunker being being built on the bottom of the top very, very easily. Yeah, and normally yep, you see the command center followed up, so it's a type of expansion build from this matchup. You've seen it in TVT as well, pretty recently, and there's a shot of that Reaper now. One of the most hardened criminals turned soldier come out here to try to take out Dong Regu. Now Dong Regu does have Zergling Speed on the way. A Reaper, if controlled properly, can kill so much before Zergling Speed is done. But more importantly, can scout a ton as well. And here, that Reaper comes now. Oh, nicely done by Dong Regu, saving that drone. And does get a kill though. Avoiding that queen. Just bouncing around, being very annoying. So Reapers are poor, you can scout with them, you can be very mobile with them. This Overlord does get taken out, but saw almost everything. Yep. 
very good timing on that Overlord as well. Not many people notice. The Queen is off the creep at the moment. That is some great Reaper control. Mm. He's, He's not really going in to do a specific thing, just to be annoying. Keep Dongragu's mind on that Reaper. And he's already going into Pre-Igniter Hellions to follow this up. I really like this move. Yep. And if you only make one Reaper, your opponent's not going to want to make a Roach War. And it's just the one Reaper. It's just the Scouting Reaper. It's very annoying. Gets a few kills. It only has one kill right now, but it's just poking at Queens, pulling them away from their duties. Although we have seen some Zergs go straight into a Roach Warren recently in the foreign scene. That's uh, very true. Should be effective if that Reaper does finally go down. And I don't think he actually sees. He saw the Tech Lab. He saw the barracks, he saw the command center, but I don't think he expects this pre -ignite. I don't think so either. There is a reactor going down on that barracks. It may be so once his pre igniter research is done, he switches it. So he's already got an upgrade, just makes the Hellions out of there. Hellion is spotted here in the middle of the map. And basically, at this point, Dongri Gu doesn't really know exactly what's going on. He saw the tech lab on the factory, but he's probably thinking it's going to be just a siege expand to follow up. But whoa, that's that is common. a very quick third. Is that a third? It no, is. it's not. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were talking about the natural that no, just no. landed. I was like, what are you <laughs> talking about, you silly person? That's that's just his hey. first command center, man. Yeah, very quick third, and a nice choice, because if your opponent is either siege expanding or doing pre igniter Hellions, either way, that third base is pretty easy to take. If it's a siege expand, he's going to play defensively. It's Hellions, Hellions can't really kill a hatchery very easily. We I like that. Is that eight drones in production at the moment? Sorry, six. six. I can't count. It's okay. <laughs> Well, after this, we're going to sit down, we're going to watch Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> and get me back on Hellions. Hellions. Oh my god, the blue flame's done. He's bunching up his drones. So many going down. The Queen Pops gets a little bit out of there. The, here come the Lynx to try and deal with those, but Gandhi getting his Hellions away. One does get caught. Not the best control there by Gandhi. I thought he was going to get those Hellions away and kill a lot more drones. Even so, he did kill a significant amount, probably four or five drones there. Damaged a lot of the other ones. He got stuck against that wall. It just really hurt him. Exactly. Now, there are medevacs out, one medevac is out, and with that medevac, you can put on a lot of pressure. In fact, there isn't a Baneling Nest at all. Oh, one Hellion caught out of position. What? Okay, it wasn't caught out. <laughs> I really thought that was going to go down. So, here come those Marines running forward here, and he may decide to drop them into the main. There are Overlords to spot for this, but here's the thing. If he drops those in there and controls them Oh, properly. sorry to cut you off, but Wings are actually coming into the natural here for Gandhi. He doesn't have any units being produced. There is no wall off either. There's only three Marines there. Nice control stopping those SCVs on the ramp as two aliens pop up. Yep, and those Zerlings are a little out of position for this drop that's coming into the main. He does have a few Zerlings at home to defend this, but he can just lift up. With, if there's no Spire, you can just basically drop forever and get away with it. He's going to kill a lot it. of Overlords. This is actually going to supply clock. Oh, if he got that Overlord, he was going to supply block him. I like the fact that the Hellion is actually underneath of that cliff. Exactly. It keeps the Hellion on the low ground so that when the Zerglings come to chase, it can do damage. This Queen's off creep, getting a lot of damage here by those Marines. Here comes a Ling counterattack again by Dongregu. But there are a lot of Pre-Igniter Hellions ready, and they're on move command. And a lot of these Lings are going to get taken out. This is looking pretty bad for Dongregu. That's a lot of Zerglings lost, and now his third base is relatively undefended. He doesn't have any spines there. He doesn't have a Baneling Nest either. He hasn't seen that third here for Gunsy though. He does have a Viking in the air to deal with, uh, just to try and stop the scouting. He does notice it now though. Trying to deal with that Queen. The Marine's coming down as well. Dongregor bringing all his Queens because of the nice creep spread he's got there. A lot of Lings being, being hatched here. But there are so many Marines and Hellions. There's just no, nothing other than Lings that the Dongregor has right now. Yeah, and here come the Marines running for their combat shields. Just finished. The stim is about to finish. He's probably going to avoid using it until he has to. Another counterattack going on by Dongregu. There are a few Hellions and Marines back to defend. He, if he does control this properly, he should be able to defend it relatively easily. And here they come now. And they're caught against these Hellions and Marines here. He's going to get a surround on them. More units are about to come out. 11 Roaches in production as these Lings go to work on this natural expansion for Gandhi. And actually, all of those SCVs taken out. He's even going to run in here and get some more of them. Hellions do scare them away, though. But yeah, he's still in that base. There's nothing that Gandhi can do. He might actually go for attack himself. He's, he's taking a little bit too much time as those roaches are out now. And they do a lot more damage to the Marines. Some people think Stim goes down. The Hellions are at the front. So many roaches. Some transfusers going nice do nicely done by Don Rigu, Forcing this back from Gandhi. I, I think those links are still in the base there as well. I think yeah. that was just cleaned up. Yeah, but this counterattack is going to be very, very strong. 
Right now, it's 47 drones with 27 SCVs. Mm -hmm. As you said, the links did a ton of damage. They were still in the base for quite some time, killing SCVs, damaging production facilities, killing units, and you know, just kind of camping in the barracks whenever a Marine pops out, kill it. Gongrigu lost that third base, but now he's got himself in a place where he can be very aggressive, although it does look like he's just going to kind of sit back passively, retake that third base. His lair is just now finishing. He's just started a Baneling Nest, so he may make a Spire from here. He does see this dropship coming in. Yeah, that's... Overlord's a position absolutely perfectly to stop this kind of stuff, but the that Viking... Of that. Yeah, the con of having that is, of course, that the Overlords can get picked off like this. Gotta be careful. Gandhi going through again into this third. You're forcing a cancel. He needs to be careful. He does have quite a few Marines. There's not enough roaches to deal with this. The Spire is going down as well. The Baneling Nest almost finished here for Dongregu. So many links in production. 16 links in production as well, getting plus one armor as well. He just wants to switch over here to basically aggressive mode. Once yep. he gets the Spire up, he can be aggressive with some Banelings and Roaches and then build up gas during that time to make those crucial Mulists and essentially make it difficult for Gonzi to take a third base. Yeah. These counterattacks with these Lings are really doing a lot more damage than Gonzi wants them to. He is mixing in. Oh, they're getting caught! Yeah, this is starting to look bad for Dongregu because he spent a lot of time trying to get that third base up, yep. was forced to cancel it again, and now he is, uh, he's in a lot of trouble. He's 30 supply behind, 40 supply behind, I take it back. Just trying to get some Banelings out here desperately. Plus those Marauders in the mix now to deal with the Roaches as best they can. Yeah. Blue Flame Hellions and Marauders versus Lings and Roaches. And plus <laughs> one attack is about to finish for these units as well, and that's going to make them so much stronger. He's forced to cancel again. Gandhi doing a great job of denying that third. But as we were saying when we first started this map, that is what it is difficult to do as Zerg. Yeah, you just can't play Dongregu's style on this map. It was a great map choice. Spire does finish, but Gun, he has seen it as he is trying to get picked off for this drop. He lifts his units back up just in time to, give it, to get away from those Banelings. But he's also coming forward. Scans going down, getting rid of all this creep spread that Dongregu spends so much time dealing with. So I still have that one right at the very end. To see that go through. This is a very tense moment for both players because neither player can really take a third base safely. Yep. Of course, Ganji's really ahead right now, but he doesn't have a lot of SCVs. He has to be very careful about this because if he completely flops it, he's going to be in a tough spot. Well, a lot of Banelings there as well. Bangling speed finishing, Roach speed finishing, plus one air attacks as well. But Dongregu pretty starved for gas at the moment. Okay, that's, that's certainly the case in Stable. And... Right now, Ganji is splitting his units up into several groups in the middle of the map, as you, can see, you guys can see. He's got them in three different locations, one in between the towers, both of his other groups on top of the towers, so he's got total vision of that area. They're split already for these Banelings that are rolling in. And here we go, all these Banelings are going to go through. Oh, Ganji, a little bit slow on the back up there. The Banelings coming through, ripping all these Marines apart, but Ganji actually got a flank there because he has spread out his units so well, and Dongregu just got crushed in that engagement. Yeah, he killed a significant amount of units, but it's just not enough. He's going to have to cancel his hatchery yet again. It's probably the third or fourth time he's had to cancel it. And this army is almost unstoppable at this point. He's trying to make more Banelings. They are going to finish just in time, but are they going to be enough? This army's still big enough that a Remax will take a little bit of time here for Don Gregor to be able to deal with. He's still just being threatening. He's always at the top of that ramp. But looks like Dongregu is going to chase him down this time. Third no. command center has been made during all of this. And then when that third command center finishes, it's going to be very difficult for Dongregu to deal with that. He's going to most likely make it into a planetary. And then once that happens, he's going to continue to pressure and force cancels repeatedly on the third base of Dongregu while he's got that planetary up. Yep. We're sitting here. They're actually evening out in supply a little bit because it is taking uh, Ganji a lot longer to remax. Yeah, he's, of course, was very down on SCVs for a while. In fact, he's still down 10 workers right now, 40, uh, 43 to 54. They're taking out that third base. It's just absolutely crucial. That's what he's been doing so well. He's actually going to have another engagement. Looks like Dungreg is going to make a note of it here, sitting at this watchtower. And Yet again, another nice spread by Ganji. And the thing about this is you've got your units split perfectly. Whoa, Here they Ganji, come. he's going to go for it. A little bit of hesitance from Dongregu. Oh, here come all the Banelings nicely split by Ganji. All these Marines do end up going down, but there's so many Marauders left. He's going to have to back off. There's a couple of Banelings chasing these guys down. He needs to split them yet again. Nice. Stops moving the Marauders and allows the Marauders to attack while running away with the Marines. 
an extremely close game between these two guys. He's trying to get his third up yet again. We'll see if he can do it this time. But at the Indeed. same time, Guns, he has taken that uh, 12 o'clock base. Exactly. Now, is he going to make it into a planetary or not? That's a pretty big decision. If he gets a planetary up, it'll kind of help him catch up as far as mining goes because he's going to get those mules. And in fact, he is going to make an orbital rather than the planetary. So he is going to be able to catch up with those mules very significantly. And in the meanwhile, Dongregu is taking that 6 o'clock base yet again. But he has scattered that 12 o'clock now, and that's very important. Yeah. He looks like he's actually moving out across the map now. He's actually distance mining from his third base. That's, and a little tip for you guys, a little tip for Unstable. Unstable knows this, he's, he's pro. But for those of you guys who don't know, if you're basically mining out of a base, you're way oversaturated, it's always better to long distance mine, unless you've got pre or Hellions running around, which in this case there are. But if you're, if you're comfortable <laughs> long distance mining, if you're being uh, aggressive on the map, it's always better to do that than to overmine a base because you just lose minerals there. And here we go. It looks like Dongrego really does not want this third up and running here for Gandhi. Being chased back. I think he's trying to get him out of position, forcing another stim. And there we go. Goes behind the, the trees there, coming back in with all these roaches. And the Banelings hiding back a little bit, trying to take out all those Marauders first so they don't waste Banelings on those either. Yeah, some really, really nice control by both of these players. This is a very close game. Both players having their thirds up and running now of very similar supplies. The compositions even for both these players are pretty close. Absolutely. And Dongregu hasn't been able to play the style that he wants. He might feel a little bit uncomfortable here. But that's the sign of a good player. But whoa, there we go. So we got Banglies coming through, getting a lot of hits off on these Marines. Dongregu coming in from the left, right side as well. So many Banglies coming through. Yeah, this is actually looking really good for Dongregu. It is. He's hitting a ton units. of these units. A lot of Banelings wasted there, but even so, he traded armies very effectively. A lot of supply right now is in those dropships. I couldn't see how many roaches because the dropships were just sitting on top of them. He will be out, looks like he will be able to take out this third base here, and now he gets a little bit back. Yeah, if that base had been a planetary, of course, he would have to hold it much easier. Right now, the supplies are 112 for Dong Regu, 93 of Ganji. I remember a lot of that supply is in medevacs. In fact, he's got seven medevacs out. So that's, you know, he's, his army is tiny compared to Dong Regu's essentially. And yeah. now Dong Regu is starting his mutas. He is. He's now getting those six, uh, six gas now up and running from that third base. He really needed those up because mutas cost a lot of gas to get through, especially when he wants to get that big number. He is going to be ready for this drop that's coming through here as well. And Ganzi not really being able to do the damage he wants to. The downside to this, though, is taking a fourth is even harder than taking a third. It really is. Taking that fourth base. Oh, oh Link's coming into the third. This is really hurting Ganzi, not making that into a planetary. He's going to lose so many SCVs here as well. There's no army anywhere close to save these either. Yeah, and and yeah. now they're coming into the natural as well. He's out at the front trying to attack this third base here for Dongregu. Those Lings are going to tear everything apart. Mute is coming out now. There is about 10 on the field by the looks of it just quickly here. And Wings finally cleaned up at that natural, but he got so many SCVs with that. Right, he did, and it looks like this base is gonna have, is gonna be killed as well. Yep. We are 16 SCVs left for Gunzi. Here we go, Dongregu. He's bringing drones as well. Bangley's coming in. Nice split by Gunzi as well, but the drones as well. Muters a, a little bit too far forward, pulling them back, not to want to engage. This Marines have got directly went for the Roach support, and he's cleaned up that attack by the looks of it. There's still some Marauders down at the bottom of the screen, but those Muters will be able to finish those up. And the hatchery's still alive. It's on 42 HP. Yeah, I cannot believe that the Marauders did not target that hatchery down. Lost his entire army, didn't even kill the hatchery. Right now it's 48 drones to 14 SCVs. It looks like Dong Rei Gu is going to take this to the final match, Unstable. Couldn't ask for a better matchup. There are so many fans of Dong Rei Gu and there's a reason why. <laughs> His Mutalist style, he makes it work even on this map here. Just making that late game Mutalist switch, picking off those Marauders. He just survived until he could get that third base up. That's exactly. what he really wanted. Guns, he knew that he needed that gas. And now with these Mutas out, it's going to be so difficult for Ganti to stay in this. That's true. He's really controlling the map with those Mutas. Once the Marine count gets really low and the, the Mutalist count gets quite high... He has nine SCVs. Exactly. Nine SCVs. He's trying to equalize that a little bit here with these Hellions. <laughs> those drones oh. were <laughs> so vulnerable there, but <laughs> even so, he's just so far behind in worker count. See that army right there? That's basically... All Everything. that Ganji has, yeah. and he's going to try to make something work with it here, but I don't think he'll be able to finish this game, and we're going to go into the final game, Unstable. Yeah. But he is going to try to make this work. He's trying to run forward with these Marauders. There are a lot of Marines. Drops. Picking off the dropships, 
crucial there. It's forcing more stems. He doesn't have any in, re in re retreat. He's only got one Baneling there and a few Marauders. He needs to really time that well to get those Marines. Because even though he does have quite a few Mutalists, he's got 18, 19 Mutalists there. Marines do do a lot of damage to them. And here we go. Looks like he's going to come through. Marauders at the front taking a lot of damage here. This hatchery may go down, which will be a small victory. Uh, there's, uh, there's more Lings and Roaches coming through. That is going to be it. Bainling's coming through as well. Ganzi trying to split, but too many Mutalists, too many Roaches. He just pulled all those units, man. He had so He's got that economy finally yep. to just make those units hold it. And I thought maybe Ganji was just going to go and target down the Hatcher, but even if he did, he would have lost his entire army as, as he did anyways. And 98 supply right now for Dongri Gu to 30 supply. And, and Ganji's actually mined out in both of his uh, exactly. bases. And there's nothing to fend this third. The only last, as you said, mining base of Ganji. All of the SCB is dying here. He's still got a few Marines, wants to try and go for it, but I think he realizes that... It's almost futile at he, this point. He did so well, though. He had that third kill denied so often. It was just that Mutalist switch that really hurt him. Yeah, the Mutalist switch and that one bad engagement. And now these Marines are going to get cleaned up. I don't know what to say, except that great play by Dong Gu. Ganji seemed to be outplaying him, seemed to be ahead, but Dong Gu just showed some great decision-making here. Yeah. He was quite ahead for a lot of that game, but it was that tech switch Dong Gu kept himself in it. He right. didn't give up. And he didn't try to go Mutalist too soon. Yep. He just waited until he had that third base up. And look at this now. Like I said, when the Banelings are morphing in your base, you know there it's time go, to GG. GG. Final game. Couldn't have asked for more, man. No. All right. I did not look very happy there, but I still think he did the best he could. And even though he lost that game, he put so much pressure on Dung Regu there. He's going to be so uh, exactly. tired after that second, first game versus Boxer, then against Gandhi. He's now, I'm going to put my money on MMA, and that is going to be the hardest of them all. Exactly. And he's going to be so tired. It's exactly what happened with Kodak. That's what, that's what he wanted to do. I think that's what Slayers had planned. They said just drag out a game, keep killing his hatchery, just keep him a little bit flustered. You will try to win the game, obviously. It wasn't, they weren't just like, oh, only do this. Oh, another Bullshit. MVP shirt. That guy's actually really nice. I met him at the uh, Super Tournament Finals. You guys come down here to Mokdong. You can talk to us. Talk to Taste Doses if they're here. They're very friendly. I'm very friendly. <laughs> so, Unstable giving me this look like, no, you're not. <laughs> um, you go. But anyway, obviously, Kanji a little bit disappointed in how that game went, but he he did what he needed to do. He played a great game. He tired out Dongregu. And that's yeah. something I've noticed since I've been in Korea. Every single player here puts everything they have into every game. That's very true. That's that's a different mentality than a lot of players have elsewhere outside of Korea. I mean, of course, everyone has that mentality. I want to give it on my all, but Koreans just push it to another level as far as training regiments and, uh, and everything else. Yep. So, obviously, Ganji is going to be a little disappointed. Whenever you lose, you feel a little disappointed, but... I know his team's happy with how he played. Yep. It's rough because now their team was looking so good. Now they're all the way here at the end of the ace match. Mm -hmm. And they've got to win it. But And it is the first opening match. They do have a lot of extra chances. But both these teams taking it as if it's the finals. They have something to prove. MVP want to show that they're still able to compete and take the final spot. There's Sully. He looks a little apprehensive, mm. I'd say. But I think we're going to see MMA. I think that he's a great anchor for the team. Yep. And if we see anyone else... I'll be surprised, to be honest. Well, they also played in the final match of the finals for the last year. That's as true. Well. So they do know each other very well. It's like the rematch. Mm. MMA, a lot of results. Um, excuse me. <laughs> a lot of recent results. Let's see who it's going to be. Could they completely fake us out? I don't know. They've been doing that a lot. No. There we no, go. No, it's really him. It's really him. The fangirl just screamed. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> I love I love when StarCraft uh, fangirls in StarCraft 1 would scream and just get really into it, get excited. Now it's starting to happen in StarCraft 2. The MVP team looking very a little bit apprehensive there. We'll see. Dongregu looks a little bit more tired than he did in the last game, which is definitely going to favor MMA. Yeah, not looking as He confident. looks ready for business right here. Very focused. Look at those results too, Unstable. GSL, May results. 
Code A round of eight, that's pretty impressive, but he was the Super Turner <laughs> run-up. It's not mentioned that uh, he won last time in the Team League. It's also not mentioned that uh, he won MLG. Mm -hmm. He's been traveling a lot. Of course, you were unfortunately were here casting Super Tournament. I was over at MLG. Yeah, wow. amazing, point. great event. And MMA really took it to home. Then. So we're going to see these two match off, and he's going to be on. Which map are we going to see? This is Zelnaga Fortress. Zelnaga Fortress. Interesting. So, this map is a pretty fair and balanced map. It's another one of those maps that doesn't have that many bases. MMA versus Dong Rego rematch. Oh, there's Venge there. So it's like the revenge match. <laughs> I like that little uh, picture they have at the bottom, too. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, Zelnaga Fortress, again, one of those maps that doesn't have that many bases you can take. So, Dong Rego's style, you can't use it as well. But we saw the last game, it can really adapt. It's almost as if he adapted in the middle of that game. He realized what was going on, just put all of his energy into holding that base, held it, got a little aggressive, got those mutas out. Then he's like, I've got my style now. What are you going to do? <laughs> and you can tell from Ganzi's point of view, he just, that's exactly what he was trying to do. Keep it on the Roach wing, mainly. And it was just clutch timing there by Dong Regu to take that down. Indeed it was. And something you notice a lot once you actually get here is just one, one mistake will end the game. They that's just true. don't give you a chance to catch back up. That's that's very true of, of these pro games as well as just play on the ladder. Mm -hmm. Even at a lower level, the Korean ladder, for example, Gold League on the Korean ladder is pretty, pretty damn good, I have to say. <laughs> um, I've seen people play on the Gold League here. I know what it's like. I haven't played in it myself personally, but it's like every Gold League is like High Diamond. Platinum League is like Masters. And then if you're in Masters League, you're playing against people who are better than Grandmasters on NA. See how these guys go. Both of them. Oh, Dongregu. Is he talking a little bit? A smack in that chat? Yeah, Dongregu actually just um, chatting it away a little bit in the chat, just laughing, doing some little emoticons in the chat. He's, uh, you know, we were saying he was looking a little tired, maybe feeling a little bit tense. Faking but I, us out. Maybe faking out a little bit. Also, I think more likely, I think he's just trying to calm himself down. And yeah. to be confident, to be calm is so important in these kind of scenarios. Don't want to choke in these kind of. Spots, look at that. Another iPad. Cheerful, I really like those. <laughs> Whereas MMA just looks... It says no one can stop if MMA. Very focused. But both these guys actually forming a pretty, pretty hefty rivalry. They've yeah, they really quite are. a bit. Always I like the it. aces of these teams. These teams at the top tier of, of the competition at the moment. Can't wait until they start meeting in Code A and Code S too. <laughs> so, the map's loaded up. Yep. Just waiting for the players to get in there. We'll get yeah. this underway final match for today. This is, of course, the final match. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't have asked for a more epic... How this turned out, I mean, it's like a rematch of the last finals. Two of the best players in the world. Two of the most popular players in the world right now. It's going to be intense. It is. The map's kind of small. <laughs> Zelnaga Fortress just kind of is. The Zelnaga Watchtower actually blows up after eight minutes, or maybe at seven. Either way, it's intense. Like, everything about this is intense and stable. <laughs> You okay? Are you uh, gonna hyperventilate or something? <laughs> I need to get. I need to calm down. And calm down. Speaking of calming down, mm -hmm. while you guys are trying to calm yourselves down, maybe you can go follow Unstable. We just made a Twitter. I've been trying to get him to get one for forever. It's FXO Unstable. I'm FXO Wolf. More importantly, there's Gom TV. You should follow Gom TV. There at that Twitter, you get tons of updates on who's casting all the time, who's playing, just all sorts of news updates. Go there first, and of course at the website GomTV.net. And last but not least m.gomtv.net go there if you have a smartphone if you have a dumb phone get a smartphone and go there <laughs> do it it's a really great site I'm serious if you've never tried it listen to Wolf he knows what's best you should go and check it out do it right now I know your phone's on your desk you're watching on your computer like well why would I go on there right now if I've gotten watched on my computer no just do it <laughs> <laughs> and we've Wolf has lost the plot here, just a little bit. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's good. I know. It, I always find it better when matches go to the final game. I'm, I'm not sure why. Like, there can be amazing games that go like 3-0 or 4-0, but I always get more excited in that seventh and, and last game. It's so tense. Mm. You know, that team mentality that goes on that builds up 
just continues to build more and more as you get closer to that ace match. If you're losing 3-0 and there's a fourth player, sure, that's really tense. It's more tense than this, perhaps, even. But at the same note, you're feeling a little down about it. And you're like, well, if we lose, you know, we were already losing. And now it's like, no, we, we've come this far. We can't back out now. Yep. Got to win that match. Like I was saying, these guys put everything they have into this game. And a lot of the times they feel so bad. But their team's sitting there, you tried your best. That's all we ask. And they just take it so to heart. And it's really, really sad to see. But, oh, we have a countdown the timer. The countdown has started. Who's going to close this one out? Will it be Slayers or MVP? It's the rematch of the last GSTL Finals. It's Dong Regu versus MMA. The map is loading. Who's going to take it? Let's find out here in our seventh game. <laughs>